Hey guys, so this is part two of the USB Hub series. Uh, this video we will dive into the actual uh, specific parts that will be used, how the interconnects will work at a high level, and some of the schematic part creation. Before that, uh, once again, if you haven't joined the Discord, please do. It's growing way more than I ever thought it would be. Uh, the link will be in the description below. So as you can see on the uh, poll, it was pretty obvious what you guys wanted. I could have known better. Um, if you ask a question about how do you want something designed, of course everyone's going to want it to be as hard as possible, uh, which is fine. I mean, that's pretty much what I had assumed anyway, and that's why when the parts I was showing, they were kind of themed for at least super speed. So it will be externally powered by a uh, power brick from uh, the wall supply. It will have uh, four downstream ports with the single upstream uh, type C. And then it will be super speed plus, which is the 10 gigabits per second. For part selection, I had showed last time the uh, HD3SS32220 and then a, uh, another TI part for the USB hub. But as much as I uh, was raving about uh, TI and their part selection, I actually didn't realize they do not have a single, at least that I could find, Super Speed Plus, so the USB 3.1 Gen 2 speed uh, hub, which is really weird. They have a lot of Super Speed, which is the five gigabit, but nothing for uh, 10 which is interesting because this MUX that they have is 10 gigabit, but nothing on the hub side. So for the hub, we're going to have to go to microchip, which is fine. Microchip probably has the second best uh, support and data sheets next to TI. And the data sheet for it, it is actually a six port uh, USB hub, but only five are uh, Gen 2 compliant, the sixth one is just USB 2, which is fine because we're still only doing the four ports. Um, six ports is just kind of excessive. And I'm not doing another poll for that because I know which way you guys will go on it. Um, so that is going to be the main USB hub. The MUX is still going to be the same as before. And the overall block diagram that I have so far spec'd out and this is how I start most of the projects I work on. I usually won't do it on Photoshop and make it somewhat pretty like this. I normally just sketch it out on paper. It really helps a lot kind of figuring out where everything is going to go um, without just kind of winging it. We will have our single USB Type-C upstream port, which they call UFP and DFP upstream facing port, which is kind of a weird nomenclature. Um, and that will take in our data from the computer or laptop. The power will come in externally. I have listed at five volt in. I'm not sure. I'm thinking about probably doing the power side last because the downstream facing ports, if those are uh, up to three amps or even an amp and a half each maximum, we're looking at six amps plus which they go straight from the five amp that would be a really big power brick but the other side of the coin is if this was a 12 volt supply we're now having to do a at least six amp plus buck converter which that's that's asking kind of a lot um i try to keep the bucks a little bit lighter so we would maybe have to do two or something uh, i'm not sure so that is definitely something that we can change. And then that will have to drop down to 3v3. The 3v3 powers uh, the MUX and the uh, USB hub. And the USB hub also takes in a 1v5, which is typical. Most of the uh, Type-C or most of the 3.0 hubs do that. And then, so the MUX will take in the two differential pair sets and I just drew these arbitrarily, that's not actually indicative of what's coming in, but it will have the two sets of differential pairs that it then flip-flops in the correct orientation and outputs a single set to the hub, 
and then it does that based on the CC pins, and then I think there's also a couple other pins, um, just like VBUS detection, that goes into the MUX. The USP hub takes in the 3V3 volts and the 1V5, and then that outputs to all of our down, downstream facing ports with just a single differential pair for the USB 3.0 side. And each of these will have one of these power controllers. You don't necessarily need it for USB, but it's kind of hard not to have them. And basically what they are is simply a power controller that clamps the current draw. So you provide in your um, voltage on here and then it controls downstream and you can limit how much current it will be able to source. And if you're using a I squared C, you can then um, communicate with it. But what's nice is in this, maybe will change once everything gets laid out. All three of these parts that I picked out, they can work standalone or with GPIO mode or with SPI or I squared C. So my goal is to not have to do any of these um, with a microcontroller, we'll see. But what we'll probably do is at least have a output connector for an SPI line uh, or an SPI header so we can communicate to it um, from a computer program or something like that, just to set different settings on here but it shouldn't be required. So the USB hub has some really neat features. It has a uh, USB bridging. So like I was saying with the, uh, using it just in GPIO mode, we can also just go from the USB and output I squared C or SPI. So we could potentially use this hub to then over USB communicate to any of the peripherals we have and it also has a uh, external SPI flash uh, storage, which is also really cool because depending on what type of storage and what type of settings we want to have, we can burn them to a uh, flash that talks over, I believe they use uh, QSPI. Yeah, so they use QSPI for the external flash. I don't think I'm going to add that in um, just because again I'm trying to kind of keep the configurations as simple as possible but it really wouldn't be that hard to add on so maybe let me know if that's something you would like to see. So this will be the first project I've ever done um, fully from like start to finish in the new KiCad which will be six. This is uh, nightly the 5.99. So I'll give that a shot. I'm going to upload this project and have it on GitHub so everything can be, uh, after each video, I'll push it to make sure they stay in sync. So I'll do all of the schematic parts, at least saving locally uh, to the folder. So it'll make it pretty easy to uh, access the parts from wherever you are. So first thing I want to do is add the, uh, the three core parts because since pretty much everything is going to be built around those, if we start there and then build out, it makes it a lot easier than adding them later. So I have a local library, and then for the symbol name, I guess we can start with the uh, USB hub first. And I have a kind of a nomenclature that I use for our internal parts, but I probably won't worry about that here. So there's a million ways that you can uh, make a schematic part. Um, this one has 100 pins, and a lot of them are going to be uh, power pins. So for something like this, I would definitely recommend having uh, two parts, so um, two units is what KiCad calls them. So one unit will be just the power supply side, and then the second will be everything else. You can also do it for something like this. One unit will be the power block. One will be the high speed, so all of the USB stuff. And then the third will be the GPIO. Maybe we'll do that, but it'll depend on how cluttered the uh, second block gets. So we can first start with the power block and then go from there. So one thing I've already noticed that is really nice that PegCAD 6 has is you when you use the pin table before, it would pile them all on top of each other on the schematic, which made it almost useless. 
now it spreads them out, which is really nice, but it still seems to not add any pin numbers, which is really annoying. But I do think this is probably going to be the quickest way. So what I am going to do is only add the power pins to this first block and then make it so they only show for this unit and then go to the second unit and make it so those only show on that one. One really weird thing that I don't think I've ever seen on a microcontroller or an IC this big, they only have a ground pin on the exposed pad. So typically it will be the VCC uh, pair, so it'll be VCC next to a ground. This just has them underneath the uh, IC, which I guess that's how it made more sense in their, uh, um, on the silicone, but I've definitely never seen that before. Okay, so there are all of the um, pins for, I don't know why the grid is at its minimum size. So this is all the pins for the uh, power side. So now, again, typically the way you would set this up is you would have um, all of your pairs connected to each other, uh, next to each other, but you really can't on this. So I guess it'll essentially just be splitting these up half and half, uh, grouping them if they're core, which is the 1.5, or if they're 3v3, and then having the VSS or the ground pin on the bottom side to make the uh, decoupling capacitors easier. So that is all of the pins for the core USB interface. So yeah, there's quite a few pins here. So I think we'll go ahead and do three blocks. So what I like to do with these is typically uh, for the USB would have inputs on the left and outputs on the right. But since we would only have a single input on the left hand side, maybe we can throw some of the other pins on the left also. So maybe only two blocks. Uh, I'll see what happens when I start putting them on the left and see what it looks like. Okay, so that is all the high speed interfaces. And yeah, there's a ton of room down here. So I guess it makes sense to have the rest of the pins here rather than just keep this blank. And what I did is I'm keeping them in groups. So this is the downstream port one, downstream two, three, four, five, and then the sixth one only has the type two interface. So it's just the uh, D plus and D minus. All right, well, that was fun. Um, so yeah, ended up just doing um, all of the non power pins on unit B, because it just wouldn't make sense having all of these um, on another block when it's still going to have to be about the same size to fit all the outputs. Uh, it doesn't look clean or it doesn't look that clean because there's so many pins, but I think I'm going to do this schematic based pretty heavily on uh, hierarchical sheets and I'll show you a few ways using those that you can keep the schematic really clean even if you have a, a couple parts that have a ton of pins like this. So what I did do for unit A is I have the uh, clock or the crystal pins on here and that I've noticed because um, there's some weird circuitry on there that helps sometimes and I might end up putting the reset pin as well. Um, what I do a lot of times with the schematic parts is I kind of flesh it out uh, just roughly like I have here. And then when I'm actually working on the schematic, there will be some pin connections that just make no sense laid out the way that I have them. So I'll swap them around, um, put them on a different unit, a different location, and it makes the schematic come out cleaner. So that is the USB hub chip. So now uh, we need to do the uh, power delivery and the MUX. Um, I guess to start with, we can do the MUX and then go to the power delivery. So this one, there's no need to uh, have two different blocks. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time. So in, instead of having to do all the pin numbers separately like I did, if we just put a pin number one here and then insert until we get all the way to pin 31. It's definitely how I should have done it in the last one. Um, 
there's still no really easy way to enter in a lot of pins, but I guess it is what it is. So now all the pin numbers are here, and then I can just go down the line. All right, so there are all these pins, and with this, since there's only going to be, like I said, a, a single unit, I will grab all of the grounds, including the uh, thermal pad, throw them on the bottom, and then all of the uh, power pins and throw them on the uh, either the top or the top left. Again, this is something that kind of depends when I start uh, laying out the schematic, but typically I will throw them on the dead top and then everything else on the left and right. And I do try to keep inputs on the left, outputs on the right. So with this, the CC pins are on the left. The two TX here are, I believe, the outputs. And then these are the input pairs that it muxes together. So just swap these in an order that makes sense, which what I was doing on the other was keeping um, positive on top and then negative um, below and the TX going on top of the RX. So I'll try to keep that the same here. And with most of these USB hubs, they don't actually care if the polarity of these is wrong. So the uh, TX positive and TX negative can be swip swapped on the layout or the schematic and it will handle the polarity um, obviously the tx side needs to be correct and the rx needs to be correct like you can't have the tx going in where the rx should and vice versa but if just the polarity of your differential pair that typically is fine so then the other outputs um here these we will just to be the same orientation for these here and now um, SDA those are on the output side and then for the others that are kind of um, like pins where you can um, set latch states like with pull ups or pull downs I usually just will throw them wherever makes sense um, so like enable mux and DIR can go on this side, and then all of the others can go over here. All right, and like I said with the USB hub, just kind of throw it together roughly, and then once um, I'm laying out the schematic and see what connections make sense and what connections don't make sense, then I'll come back and adjust it as makes sense. Because if you try to uh, figure out exactly where each of these will go, you'll never get it right the first time. Um, so that's why I just like doing it once the schematic is going through. So now the last part is the power management, which should be the easiest of them all. All right, that is the last of the three parts uh, built. That's the USC 2114 uh, power management uh, IC. Pretty exhausted. <laughs> I'm normally not making that many uh, that many big parts uh, right off the bat, uh, right in a row like that. So I'm gonna end it here. Um, the next video, I'm thinking another one or two, maybe three videos uh, going through the schematic, depending on how long that takes. Then I'm going to do the layouts uh, in a live stream format again. I really enjoyed that. So figure another two, three videos for the layout. And then hopefully we'll be making some uh, real progress on this. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comments any suggestions on this project or any other projects in general, and I will see you in the next video.